more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, y'all. Bear with your boy. A little bit under the weather, but definitely wanted to jump in here and show a little bit of what Mike McDonald would bring to the table for them Ravens. Uh, if you saw in the last video, uh, when my man Wink Martindale got pushed out the door, or however that went down, I remarked that obviously I wanted Rex Ryan to come back, but obviously that's a pie in the sky for somebody like Rex to come back. But I remarked that my 1B will be Mike McDonald, and that shit happened. So he leaves for one season, goes to Michigan, establishes himself, then comes back to the NFL as a defensive coordinator as well. That is a hell of a come up in a two-year time period. Now, I just wanted to kind of jump in here and show some maybe some misconceptions or just the basis of it. Listen, if you play defense, the bottom line with defense is you're not going to just fool your way to success in defense. You can do that shit on offense. Defense is about players. Defense is about execution. You can do everything right on defense and still give up a touchdown because someone didn't tackle or something like that, you know? So you got to always keep that in mind. You can play whatever defense – from whatever type of alignment you want and have success. So people always think, oh, no, we got to have a 4-3 uh, because we're in a 3-4 and this and that. That shit is dumb to me. People always want the opposite of what they have currently. Now, some goofball jumped on the channel and he was talking all in my comment section all crazy, talking about Mike McDonald runs a 4-3 defense. I'm guessing people got this in their mind because I, when I did the Wink Martindale thing, People kept talking about a 4-3 defense and wanting that and shit like that, which I think is just absolutely goofy. The Ravens are perhaps the best 3-4 team in the last 25 years. So you keep up with that, right? That's your established identity. You just find ways to make it better. So Mike McDonald, he pretty much took what you see right here on this screen and made it his pretty much the majority of his defensive calls or his concepts come out of this base alignment. For one – you're in college, one season, implementing something, and you're not going to have time to install an entire Ravens playbook to some college kids. You got a quick turnaround there from when he got into town into when he had to have everything established. So they pared it down, simplified, and they had very good results. So you'll see uh, pretty much a two-eye, a three technique. Uh, you'll get your linebackers, your edge players who are linebackers, widened out, right? You're going to be widened out to the nines or you press them to the sixes or whatever like that. You're usually going to have uh, two inside linebackers on the field. He pretty much does that no matter what. You'll see with most of these guys, if they go to a nickel package like this is right here where we see Marlon Hump right here in, in a nickel role, right, or that star role as you hear a lot of times in college, um, which just means kind of a strong side defender. You'll have that. Those guys are, all get down in four-point stances, right? He keeps his edge players – man, I'm struggling with this one right here in my throat. He keeps his edge players in a motorcycle stance no matter what. All right, so here's McDonald's. Now think about it logically. He was up under Wink Martindale. I want to say, shit, he may go back to Dean Pease if, if I'm thinking about it correctly when I first started hearing about Mike McDonald. How is he going to be a 4-3 guy? He's pretty much this new generation's version of a Rex Ryan. That's how these trees go, right? It's like the guys who are Bill Walsh guys, even though they're not with Bill Walsh. There's to this day guys who are Bill Walsh guys that didn't necessarily ever coach with Bill Walsh. They just continue that lineage. He is that. He's going to run a 3-4 base defense, and it will be multiplistic just like Wink Martindale's. He may do something even totally different from what he did in Michigan just because he'll be working with professional players and especially professional players who have played in a scheme that he also comes from. Just think about it logically. If you see right here, the same exact thing, right? This is usually his base right here. So I want to show you this. If you can see right here, going against 11 personnel, a team like Maryland has a spread team that throws the ball all over the yard. And what he will do against a team like Georgia, how they will set up their front and you can see what he is actually based in. Remember, this is their nickel packages. They have their their two star edge players here, uh, David Ajabo and Aiden Hutchinson, right? And it probably would behoove them to grab one of those guys in the draft, to be honest with you. And then, of course, you got uh, Josh Ross and Junior Colson right here off ball. 
But then you got your regular guys up front as well that would play at a two technique and a three technique depending on uh, where they're at in the field. Then you got that star position player that I was telling you about that he always runs with. This guy does a lot of different shit. They're blitzing from the inside and man coverage type stuff. He'll drop back in the safeties, uh, different things like that. So Dax Hill right here doing that. What McDonald ran was very simplified at Michigan. He was coming off the heels of Don Brown, uh, one of the greatest defensive coordinators, in my opinion, of the past however many years in football. Don Brown's a 3-4 guy. All these same guys that you see here or that I'll talk about in this or I'll mention, uh, 90% of them were already multi-year starters or have been entrenched in that Don Brown system. So he came and brought a little bit of flavor from some other stuff, but I'm pretty sure he picked up a lot of the stuff that Don Brown was already working on, which a lot of good college programs do. Uh, you can see the guys at Alabama who are the offensive coordinators that usually try to pick up what the previous offensive coordinator was doing, um, especially if they were doing well, which they usually are at Alabama. So a lot of elements of that, but you can tell some of his influence in certain things, um, but he just definitely simplified it. And they're very gap sound, so he always wants all gaps covered. So guys on the second level, you'll see those guys extremely aggressive, right? They want to play the pat. They want to play the run on the way to the passer, but they want to do it by, while maintaining uh, gaps in this, right? So all gaps covered there. If you are to shoot, right, you're going to shoot your shoot your wide, you better do so in your own gap. So never be in another man's gap, baby. You got to practice gapstinence, and you will see a lot of times uh, these guys will definitely be the, the fifth man sent. Not a ton of uh, crazy-ass blisses like you see from Wheat Martindale, but definitely he has that in his arsenal as well, and I expect him to do a lot more of it with the Baltimore Ravens because that's what the Ravens do. And, of course, John Harbaugh is a big influence on that as well. You see here, these guys are extremely aggressive. That's how they get caught a lot of times is out on the edges there. And like I said before, you can do everything right or you have a correct call or something like that and it still be wrong if you don't tackle. But defense is about execution there. But you can see Ross here. He's going to blitz through his gap, try to take on. Definitely want defenders – on the second level who are able to disengage from blocks. So you have to be able to wall and discard there so they can always leave that free man, right? They'll try to get a free hitter right here. Uh, usually your weak side player there, he'll clean up a lot of the tackles. So I would imagine that would be Patrick Queen. That would be his best role, in my opinion. Just let him clean everything up, backside, and get after it that way. But you got to have great tacklers on the back end because they will put those guys – in a lot of difficult situations as well with some of the stuff that he calls, especially with the fact that he does like to go to an organic blitz. A lot of the, I'm sorry, no such thing as an organic blitz. He does like to go to an organic pass rush, meaning nothing fabricated a lot of the times as well. But you can do that when you have Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo at the college level. It's like having uh, a freaking T.J. Wide and um, I don't know who are – Bud Dupree back on the same team or something like that in the NFL. Much different task going against the University of Georgia, who sometimes trots out 13 personnel, as we see right here. They have three tight ends on the field. So you see what Michigan is actually based in, right? That's how you know what you're based in when somebody comes with base personnel. So now you see it's different, right? Now it's a legitimate 3-4, right? Here's your in, tackle in, then your, your linebackers right here. So on this one right here, you can see the conundrum, though, when you are playing these types. Some of these guys are going to have to cover, especially when you're sending these fabricated packages here. So on this one right here, they're going to send the nickel. So that puts the onus on the inside linebackers to be able to have to cover a little bit more in space, which is, you know what I'm saying, it is what it is on that point. From that standpoint, we've seen that a lot. And Mike McDonald does play with a ton of too high, right? He plays a, a couple, a lot of too deep shell there. But you will see the outside linebackers do what? Be outside linebackers. That's why it's not a 4-3. 4-3 in nomenclature. 4-3 is not the number of guys on the line of scrimmage. That's why a 3-4 defense, despite having five men on the line of scrimmage, is not called a five-man 
or a, a five man front. You know what I mean? Or it's not labeled that. It's a three four because the outside linebackers are not down linemen. They are actual linebackers. You will see that right here with this linebacker having to cover uh, Brock Bowers here. You can see it right here coming out. Look at the carnage and everything. You can see him off the line of scrimmage going way downfield. Aiden Hutchinson did get a chance to, to rush there, but this linebacker right here is having to cover way downfield, and it shows that it's probably not his game to be doing that there. But there's your element that I know a lot of Ravens fans will get mad and get mad when you have to try something different. That's what you have to vary your approach on defense, right? Because the offense is going to vary their approach. You got to be able to try some different things and and ha and perhaps you get them on a certain play or something like that. But you can't always do the same thing. You can't always just be reserved in your approach there. But as we see right here, definitely a 3-4 defense right there. You got a one technique. All these guys are, you got even got an inside approach. So pretty much almost like a two-man weave here, right? He's just meant to take this inside approach. He's the hammer. And then the DB would have been the nail here, but he gets picked up with the blitz. Right? Good blitz pickup there. But like you see right there, it's a linebacker. <laughs> Straight up. Deep-ass safety, too. Look how deep the safeties got on this. And this was first down. Uh, still in that 3-4. This time they got an empty set there. But they still have a couple of tight ends in the game. Actually, still have three tight ends in the game. So you can still see the base alignment right there. Got that shade. Of course, you got your ends really pressed out right here. Just because they have to. Because guess what? The outside linebacker on this one right here, he's definitely an outside linebacker land having to play man coverage against the tight ends out here. And you still see Aiden Hutchinson back in his normal post, always trying to be the one that they have rushing up the field. And, of course, your other in here. So if you think about things like that and you put it into perspective, you really just have to go by the skill set of the players. And if you liken that to the Ravens, uh, I think the Ravens would be just fine with this. Obviously, man, come on. This guy is a Raven. Mike McDonald is a Raven, so there's really nothing – it's just, this is a simple fact that it lets you know that there was nothing broken with this year besides the injuries. That's why he went and played it safe. It's not even really playing it safe. You just put a refresher on something that was very good in the past. Remember, in 2020, uh, it was the, what, the sixth-ranked defense uh, or and then the fourth-ranked defense in 2019, right? So, come on, now we know that these guys can really go. It's about having that health. And it's about execution. Remember that. Execution, guys. I definitely want to see the Ravens come away with another edge player in this particular draft here. Um, Probably another safety as well. If it was Kyle Hamilton, that shit would be nasty. Um, But realistically speaking, definitely need to add a, another solid edge presence. I don't know if Adafi Owe is that guy that you would just – be the designated home run hitter sack guy. He looked pretty good early on. However, I like him beyond just rushing the passer. I love that athleticism. I love his ability to do some of the stuff like you would see right here. They're going to have a fabricated pressure scheme where they're going to send both both linebackers this time, right? You're going to send Colson and Ross here, but then they'll have Hutchison step away, right? So it's still a five-man pressure, but you got your best edge player right here or your best pure rusher uh, dropping out. So they'll do some of that. So don't get mad if he if he's still doing that there. But you can see him still running those fabricated pressure schemes there. But you got to have a guy like that. And Odafe always kills that kind of stuff, that sideline to sideline stuff. You guys check that out again. You can see him right here with the pre-bluff. Look, that was an empty set too. But look at him stay parallel to the line of scrimmage. This is definitely the kind of stuff from sideline to sideline. Adafi Owe could definitely rule the flats there. But if you have a designated pass rusher, like the David Ajabo kid, he may be there when the Ravens pick. I think that would be a very good pick for them. <laughs> Team those two guys up for the next however many years at edge. Ooh, boy. Hopefully he leaves this in college. I'm not sure where he picked this up from. I had to go back and look through the archives, see if the Ravens were doing this. But these pre-snap line shifts, I've seen the University of Georgia do this a thousand times, and they've drawn a thousand false start penalties on it. 
I don't know. It's very, very impactful, very effective, but it just seems so bush league to me. We see him right here starting a tight alignment and then flare out. Usually they'll fall start off that bad boy. But you can see a uh, pass tag on the back of a run call here. Look at the aggressiveness that the entire front plays. You saw that? You got you got the everybody's right. So now you're almost stacked off the ball right here. It's almost like a straight stack defense right here with the uh, the star player right here, that that nickel position player sending that jet player, that jet player in motion, telling the people on the other side to worry about him. But you can see the safety here charging downhill extremely fast, and he almost intercepts this. Oh. So that you man to man on the outside right there, and you have outside leverage or something like that, and your safety is coming screaming that hard, and they were able to get this behind them. If he didn't judge this correctly and got in that passing lane, they must have been some great film study stuff right there. That's how big plays happen. So you can make a call. And it'd be a scary call, and you still execute it to perfection like that. Or you can make a simple call, and you get your ass beat. It's it's called football, man. Shit ain't always going to be perfect. Right, I'm going to go ahead and call it right now so I can rest my throat. Wait, pause, pause. Um, I want to come back and really talk about maybe the coverage shells and what he's working with on the back end and the secondary and everything like that. But as we can see right here, you can see the versatility now, right? They got the a straight up nose tackle here, and Aiden Hutchinson this time pushed in, right? And more of a five technique. You got the Morris kid out here at outside linebacker. So what that is is that star player I was telling you about, who I would like to see be Brandon Stevens. I love the versatility of Brandon Stevens. Him playing that nickel role, right? If they go to a permanent nickel, I'm not sure if that's feasible in the NFL running a permanent nickel with your outside linebackers and just two guys on the inside like that. But I would definitely like to see them try. But you use a guy like that, you can bring him in if he's stout enough, which Stevens, Stevens is. He's nearly 220 pounds. You bring him in as the outside linebacker sometimes, and then there's your 3-4. You can see it morph right here. See him? You come in at the end, and then boom, there you go. You got to have somebody stout like that. So... With that being said, man, continuity, this is, a, is if you want to hire from within, that would have been cool, but you just went out and got somebody who now has a little bit of defensive coordinator experience, somebody who John Harbaugh identified as a future superstar who proved himself in one season to be that, helping Michigan all the way to the playoffs and getting over that Ohio State hump and everything like that, especially on defense where they did struggle. Even the great Don Brown struggled with Ohio State. They did very good against a extremely good Ohio State offense. So I'm excited to see what Mike McDonald can bring. Um, but I'm excited to see him still run a lot of the stuff that they've run before and just have a better execution from it. That's that's me there. I know how you fans are. You fans always want something to be totally different. I like continuity, and I love with the Ravens, the style of football that they've played and the results that they've had prior to this season. If you're not taking into account the injuries and shit like that, then you're just fooling yourself. You're, you're just trying to play or play the role. So I'll come back with more on that, man. But Mike McDonald, back in B-more, you know I'm loving that straight up. All right? But it's your boy Murph, the underground king, a.k.a. the DMV king, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.